Using information drawn from our interactive platform, this video provides an account of the events of the night of the 26th to 27th of September 2014 in and around the city of Iguala, Mexico. At 17.30 on September the 26th, around 80 students from the Rural Teachers College of Ayotzinapa drove north on two commandeered buses. The students intended to seize more buses in order to drive to the annual commemoration of the October 2, 1968 Tlatelolco student massacre in Mexico City. The authorities were aware of the students' motives and of their movements from 1800 hours. At around 1900 hours, the students arrived outside of Iguala. At approximately 2000 hours, a group of them commandeered a bus heading into the city. Around 21.15, the students arrived at the Iguala bus terminal. Shortly afterwards, at 21.20, the students left the terminal on five buses. The first convoy was composed of four buses, Costa Line 2012, Costa Line 2510, Estrella de Oro 1568 and Estrella de Oro 1531. These vehicles headed north towards the city centre of Iguala. The other bus, the Estrella Roja, headed south. About 10 minutes later, at 21.30, as the convoy of four buses arrived at the corner of Calle Galeano, Iguala Municipal Police agents attempted to block its path by firing warning shots into the air. At this point, the Estrella de Oro 1531 bus split from the rest of the convoy and headed east. The remaining three buses moved further north, up Calle Juan Álvarez, at 21.40, both convoys of buses were attacked simultaneously at two different locations. The northbound convoy of buses was blocked at the intersection of Calle Juan Álvarez and Periférico Norte by Iguala Municipal Patrol 02. These buses were attacked from both the front and back. At the front of the convoy, on Periférico Norte, were Iguala Municipal Police Patrol cars 2, 11, 19 and 26 and Kokula Municipal Police Patrol cars 302, 305 and 306. Behind the buses were Iguala Municipal Patrol cars 17, 18, 20, 22, 27 and 28. The attack lasted several minutes and two students were injured. Aldo Gutierrez was shot in the head while attempting to move patrol vehicle 02 and student J was shot in the hand. Student MAEO began to suffer breathing difficulties. The other students begged the police to allow their three injured colleagues to be evacuated to a hospital and eventually the police agreed. While none of the three died, Aldo remains in a coma to this day. Across the city, at roughly the same time, the Estrella de Oro 1531 was blocked off under a bridge in front of the state courthouse, the Palacio de Justicia, by up to four Iguala municipal patrols, who proceeded to assault the students on the bus. Around 15 minutes later, a ministerial police patrol reported witnessing four municipal patrols and eight policemen around the bus. As the attack continued, the number of patrols increased to eight, including Iguala Municipal Patrol cars 24, 28 and 26, and another unidentified municipal patrol on the opposite side of the bus. At 22.20, 150 metres behind the Estrella de Oro 1531, the Estrella Roja bus was blocked by two unidentified patrols. The Estrella Roja bus was not attacked, but the passengers were forced to exit the bus by armed policemen. As the students fled towards Iguala, three Iguala municipal patrols attempted to intercept them. Fearing for their lives, the students moved on to Colonia Pajaritos. Just after 22.30, a military agent, who claimed that he was present at the scene of the Palacio de Justicia from 2200 to 2300 hours, took a photograph of the event on his phone. He reported that more police cars arrived while he was at the scene of the Estrella de Oro 1531 attack. Federal patrols were also present at the scene. 
By now, the bus was surrounded by approximately 12 cars. Using tear gas, the police forcefully removed the students from the bus. Between 12 and 15 students were beaten up and loaded into the back of multiple police vehicles. They were driven south in the direction of Chilpancingo and disappeared. Protected witness testimonies state that up to three of the patrols involved in the attacks on the students were from Huitzuco Municipal Police. According to the first testimony of the Estrella Roja driver, his bus left the Palacio de Justicia and headed towards the Iguala toll booth. In this case, the bus would have driven over the bridge. Starting at about 22.15, back at the Periferico Norte site, Iguala Municipal Police opened fire on the back of the blocked convoy. The attack was primarily directed at the Estrella de Oro 1568, where student FM suffered gunshot wounds. The students on that bus quickly surrendered. They were forced to lie face down on the pavement before police loaded them into the back of six or seven patrol cars, including patrol cars 17, 18, 20, 22, 27 and 28. Between 20 and 30 students were taken from the bus in this way, and all but one of them were forcibly disappeared. This was student FM, who was wounded and allowed to be taken to hospital. At approximately 2300 hours, after the police left the scene, the remaining students attempted to protect any evidence of the attacks. Despite the fact that several law enforcement agencies were aware of the situation, and despite the local military barracks being only minutes away, no state officials arrived to help the students or to process the crime scene. Journalists and teachers who had heard of the attack began to arrive at the site. At 2300 hours, roughly the same time, a bus carrying the junior football team of Los Avespones left Iguala Stadium, heading back to Chilpancingo. The team bus and the cars of young players' families were stopped at a federal police checkpoint. At 23.10, the federal police split up the convoy by directing the family members to detour from the highway and continue along a rural road until the toll booth before rejoining the highway. The bus itself, however, was ordered to continue along the highway. At around 23.10, at the scene of the Palacio de Justicia, the 14 students who had fled the Estrella Roja returned to the scene. As they moved over the bridge, they saw beneath them the empty Estrella de Rojo 1531 bus, surrounded by several police patrols. At 23.30, some 20 minutes later, two Iguala municipal police patrol vehicles attempted to run over the 14 students. Patrols from the Federal Ministerial Police also chased the students while they ran along Periferico Poniente towards Periferico Norte. Later, Municipal police officers would also chase surviving students into the neighbourhood of Colonia 24 de Febrero and fire shots at them. At roughly the same time, 23.30, four attacks began 20 kilometres south of Iguala, close to the Santa Teresa crossroad. The identity of the perpetrators of these attacks is still contested. First, at the crossroad, a taxi came under fire. The taxi reversed for 500 metres. The family members of the Avispanis football team tried to assist the driver. One of the passengers in the taxi, Blanca Montiel, was killed by a gunshot. Minutes later, the bus carrying the Los Avispanis team passed by the same location and was attacked without warning from both sides. Armed men approached the bus and attempted to enter it. One of the players, David Josué Evangelista, was killed and eight other players were injured. The bus driver, Vitor Manuel Lugo Ortiz, 
was also injured. He died in the hospital later that night. Another taxi, transporting civilians, was stopped 500 metres north of the Santa Teresa crossing by two vehicles parked in the road. According to the first testimony, the taxi continued down the road and was attacked at the crossing by municipal police. New investigations indicate that they were Huitsuko police, together with members of criminal organisations. A truck carrying goods was also attacked and one passenger was injured. Shortly afterwards, 500 metres north along the same road, another taxi was attacked by unidentified perpetrators. The shots were fired from the hills along the road. The driver was injured. Once the attackers realised they had shot at the wrong bus, they fled towards Santa Teresa in four cars shooting indiscriminately at passing vehicles. For an hour after these attacks, no assistance was given to the victims at the Santa Teresa crossing, despite their repeated calls for help and the presence of multiple state agents, including five federal police patrols, two military patrols and four federal ministerial patrols, all of whom were in the area at this time. According to the victims' testimonies, all security forces present at the scene refused to help them. Ambulances finally arrived at the scene at 0 hundred hours and 47 minutes. At around midnight, heavily armed civilians set up two roadblocks. The first was three kilometres south of the Santa Teresa crossing, near Sabana Grande, and the other was 30 kilometres south near Mescala. At the roadblock near Mescala, the armed civilians fired at vehicles and wounded a number of people. This roadblock was in place until 0200 hours. Some testimonies suggest that the roadblock was reinstated at 0600 hours. Between 0 hundred hours and 15 minutes and 0 hundred hours and 40 minutes, tow trucks began to rapidly remove the Estrella de Oro 1531 bus from the Palacio de Justicia site. At 0 hundred hours and 15 minutes, back at Periférico Norte, the students protecting the crime scene held a press conference to report upon and denounce the attack. They testified that during that time, multiple vehicles passed by the scene but did not offer to help. This included two police patrols, a civilian protection patrol and a pickup truck. Fifteen minutes later, at around 0 hundred hours and 30 minutes, a white pickup truck passed by which looked similar to the vehicles of the Federal Ministerial Police and was carrying armed personnel. Many suspicious vehicles passed by the scene and traffic along the Periférico Norte was blocked. At around 0 hundred hours and 30 minutes, a third and final attack was carried out against the students, teachers and journalists at Calle Juan Álvarez by heavily armed, non-uniformed assailants. Three of them came out of a black Icon vehicle a red expedition-type truck is also suspected to have taken part in the attack. A suspicious taxi was also present. In this attack, Daniel Solis Gallardo and Julio Cesar Nava were killed and Edgar Andres Vargas was badly wounded. Two other students were also injured. At 0 100 hours, around 25 students and a teacher sought medical help in the Hospital Cristina clinic. Army officials arrived at the clinic and proceeded to intimidate and aggressively interrogate them. Later, the students managed to relocate to another hospital. At a later unknown time during the night, Julio César Mondragón, a student who was present at the final attack site in Periférico Norte, was tortured and killed by unknown perpetrators. The time at which his body was discovered the next day is widely contested. Finally, at around 0600 hours, the students began to gather and testify to the local prosecutor, the PGJE. This reconstruction demonstrates that the many different forces involved, including municipal police from three different localities, 
ministerial, state and federal police, the military and members of criminal organisations, were all acting in different capacities as perpetrators or observers of violence throughout the night. Furthermore, they made extensive use of infrastructure designed to provide security, such as the centralised communication system C4 and police vehicles, in order to do so. This investigation also illustrates how the phases of violence, including the forced disappearance of the students, took place almost simultaneously in the presence of different state agencies in different parts of the city. These events support the conclusion that the attacks were coordinated and that multiple state security agencies colluded together. All of the agencies were active that night, but none prevented the violence, making the Mexican government apparatus responsible for the killing of civilians and the ongoing disappearance of the 43 students.